Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to prove that one equals zero. But we're not just going to prove it once, we're going to prove it in five different ways. Now, obviously, one doesn't equal zero. So in each of the proofs, we must have reasoned wrongly at some point. Now, here's your challenge. Try and decide what's wrong with each proof, or with any of the proofs. And below, in the comments, let us know what you think it is. So reference it with whatever the proof is, proof one, two, three, all the way up to five. So give us a reference to which proof you're talking about and leave your comments. Now, if you think there's going to be unanimity in the replies, I think you're going to be very much mistaken. But maybe what you could also do is go through the comments and any that you think are appropriate, put a like next to. Okay, let's discover the maths. To begin with, think about the implications if 1 did equal 0. If t is any real number, then t is equal to t times 1. But if 1 equals 0, this is t times 0, which is 0. We'd have to conclude that every real number is 0, so that all the real numbers are 0. And not just the real numbers, but the complex numbers too because complex numbers can be expressed as pairs of real numbers. The only complex number would be the pair 0, 0. The complex numbers would be the set formed only by 0. Imagine you were going to take a, a, an exam and the only numerical grade you could get was 0. It would be an absolute disaster. Anyway, Let's get on with our demonstrations. First, we'll start with something as clear as minus two equals minus two. Now, anyone who can't see this should visit an eye doctor. Now, the first minus two we'll replace by one minus three, which is the same. And the second minus two we'll write as the result of four minus six. Next, we'll replace 1 minus 3 by 1 squared minus 1 times 3. And the right-hand side we'll write as 2 squared minus 2 times 3. Now we're going to complete squares. First, we add 9 over 4 on both sides of the equality. Then we copy in the two parts of the first element and put 9 over 4 as 3 over 2 squared. For the second elements, we copy the minus and the first factors 1 and 2, and write the 3 as 2 times 3 over 2. Notice that we've put the factors in front and behind. Notice on both sides of the equality, we have the square of the first, the square of the second, minus double the first times the second. This is the square of a subtraction. So we have, on the left side, 1 minus 3 over 2 squared, and this is equal to, on the right side, 2 minus 3 over 2 squared. Now we take the square root of both sides of the equality, the root and square cancel and we obtain 1 minus 3 over 2 equals 2 minus 3 over 2. The 3 over 2 cancels giving us 1 equals 2 and subtracting 1 from both sides we arrive at the result 0 is equal to 1. Amazing. Let's move on to the second proof. This time we're going to start with two equal real numbers A and B. That is A 
equals b. Now multiply both sides by a. a times a is a squared and this is equal to a times b. Next, subtract b squared from both sides of the equality. On the left side, we have a difference of squares, which is a sum times a difference. In the right part, we take a common factor of b out. So we have b times a minus b. The a minus b on both sides cancels, so we have that a plus b equals b. But remember, a equals b. So on the left side, we have a plus b, which is a, making a total of 2a. And this is equal to a. Cancelling the a, 2 is equal to 1. And subtracting 1 from both sides leaves 1 equals 0. Strange. For the third proof, first of all remember that i, the imaginary unit, is the square root of minus 1. In other words, it's an imaginary number such that when squared, it equals minus 1. We'll start from the equality minus 1 over 1 equals 1 over minus 1. It's clearly true since both sides equal minus 1. Now, we take the square root of all the elements of the equality and substitute i for the root of minus 1. Now we have an equality of fractions. If we cross multiply, we get the same result. We get that i times i, which is i squared, is equal to 1 times 1, which is 1. And we get that i squared, which is minus 1, is equal to 1. Adding 1 to both sides gives 0 equals 2. Then we divide through by 2 to leave us with 0 equals 1. Again, very strange. For the fourth proof, we'll use derivatives. Now, as you know, x equals 1 added to itself x times, or x multiplied by 1. So if we multiply both sides by x, we get that x times x, which is x squared, is equal to, applying the distributive property, x plus x plus x, and so on, or x add x. Now differentiate both sides of the equality. On the left side, the derivative of x squared is 2x. And on the right side, since the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives, and knowing that the derivative of x is 1, we have x number of 1s, which is x. We have two equal monomials, so that the coefficients coincide. So we have that 2 is equal to 1, and subtracting 1 from both sides gives us, guess what? 0 equals 1. Crazy! Finally, for the last proof, the fifth one, we're going to use integrals. For this, let's calculate the integral of 1 over x. Well, you already know that this is the natural logarithm of the absolute value of x. But we're going to calculate it in a different way using integration by parts. Let's put u equal to 1 over x and dv equal to dx. Then we have that du is the derivative of 1 over x, which is minus 1 over x squared. 
we also have that v is the integral of dx, which is x. So, using the integration by parts formula, we have uv, which is 1 over x times x, minus the integral of v du, which is the integral of x, times minus 1 over x squared dx. This becomes 1 over x times x, which is 1, minus, with this minus, which is a plus, the integral of x times 1 over x squared, or 1 over x. Now we equate the first and last terms of this chain of equalities to obtain that the integral of 1 over x is 1 plus the integral of 1 over x. Cancelling the integrals, we're left with, believe it or not, 0 equals 1. Really? Well, there you are. Five completely different proofs as to why 1 equals 0. Now, in the comments below, it's your turn. Let us know where you think the error or errors are and reference which of the proofs 1 through 5 you're referring to. Let the debate begin. I hope you found this fun and interesting. Uh, please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you again very soon to discover more maths.